The series kicks off by introducing us to a beautiful fighter named Feng Yu. One morning, Feng Yu comes across an elderly man named Feng Shu, who happens to be her grandfather. Feng Shu asks Feng Yu to take over as the company's leader, but she declines and decides to pursue a career as an MMA fighter instead. She also shows a letter from the university she plans to attend. Meanwhile, we meet a young man named Mang Tian. He's a kind-hearted guy who doesn't like fighting and takes care of his two younger siblings because their parents left them. One day, Mang Tian received an extra task from his boss at work to deliver an order to a loyal customer. His boss admired Mang Tian for his fast and excellent work, making him one of the favored employees. Mang Tian then hopped on his bicycle to deliver the order. While riding downhill, he noticed an elderly woman accidentally letting go of her cart full of goods, causing it to roll away uncontrollably. Without a second thought, Mang Tan rushed to chase after the cart. At the same time, Feng Yu was walking from the opposite direction, and the cart was headed straight for her. Feng Yu quickly kicked the cart. Mang Tan was surprised, and the elderly woman was angry, but Feng Yu seemed unbothered. She calmly walked past Mang Tan and compensated the elderly woman for her cart. It turns out that Feng Yu was on her way to visit her martial arts master. Shortly after, Mang Tan arrived at the same place to deliver the order. Surprisingly, Feng Yu's master was a loyal customer of Mang Tian's boss. They bumped into each other again, but Feng Yu remained distant. Some time later, they encountered each other for the third time near a fountain. Unaware of each other's presence, they were both deep in prayer, tossing coins into the water as part of their wishes. Later, Mang Tian received an invitation to the university, bringing both happiness and confusion because he had to support his two younger siblings. Luckily, his boss helped him resolve the issue and introduced Mang Tan to a friend who assured him of finding a job in the new city. Not long after, Mang Tan moved to the city where the university was located, bringing his siblings along. They rented a simple house, with his daily routine was much the same work, take care of his siblings, and then head to campus. On his first day at the university, he noticed something strange. Many female students greeted and complimented him, while he didn't see any male students around. Eventually, he read an announcement that revealed he was the only male student on campus, causing all the female students to chase after him. Overwhelmed, he ended up in a park, where he unexpectedly met Feng Yu for the fourth time. This sparked Feng Yu's curiosity, but she remained arrogant, leading to a heated argument. Mang Tan got injured during the argument, and instead of apologizing, Feng Yu offered money as compensation, leaving Mang Tian humiliated. He brought up Feng Yu's past actions with the elderly woman, leading to another intense argument. However, Feng Yu explained that she had kicked the cart to save a child from getting hurt. In the end, Mang Tan found himself in a classroom for his first day of college. But he couldn't focus on his studies because he was the only male student, drawing all the attention from his classmates. On the flip side, Feng Yu recalls her childhood when her parents, initially hoping for a son, had her disguised as a boy. At school, everyone believed she was a boy until her younger brother, Feng Zhou, was born. In the evening, Mang Tian overhears his younger brother, Mang Lung, talking in his sleep. Mang Lung mentions an MMA fighter nicknamed Queen, whom he idolizes. This revelation makes Mang Tian realize that the person Mang Lung admires is Feng Yu. Memories of his encounters with Feng Yu, like the cart incident, her cold attitude that irritated him, and their argument in the park, flood back. Looking into Feng Yu's eyes, he also recalls his mother, who had left him with his drunk father in the past. However, the exact details of their family problems at that time remain unknown. The next day, Mang Tan had a plan. He needed to go to campus to sort out some issues, mainly because of the poor facilities, like the missing men's restroom. But his main reason for wanting to leave was to avoid running into Feng Yu again. Mang Tan didn't mention this to the campus official Lu Kai. Surprisingly, when Mang Tan talked to Lu Kai about the restroom problem, Lu Kai showed him a work order for building a new men's restroom, and it was already finished. Even more surprising, the restroom's door had a silhouette of Mang Tian's photo on it. Seeing this left Mang Tian speechless. Despite this, Mang Tian was still determined to leave the campus. But Lu Kai had one condition if he wanted to withdraw. He had to deposit his withdrawal letter in a mailbox located in a building. Initially, Mang Tan thought it would be easy, but when he got to that building, he faced many obstacles. Several female fighter students were guarding the place and Mang Tan had to get past them. At first, Mang Tan managed to overcome each obstacle one by one. But unfortunately, he got defeated after receiving a kick from one of his opponents. Disheartened, 
Mang Tan went back to Lu Kai to complain about the situation. In the end, Lu Kai persuaded Mang Tan to stay by offering him a big discount on his tuition fees for an extended period. This got Mang Tian interested, and he decided to continue studying at the campus. Not long after, Mang Tan went back to his class for lectures. He soon realized that the female students at the campus didn't seem very focused on their studies. They were always busy with their own activities, and he felt like he was the only one paying attention to the professor. The campus head, Shou Zhang, noticed this too. Eventually, Shou Zhang decided to recruit another male student. They quickly made an announcement through a brochure, but it was quite unusual. The campus only talked about their achievements in combat sports like taekwondo, karet, and boxing, all of which were accomplished by female students. One of the famous female fighters was Feng Yu, known as the Queen of MA. All students at the campus had to join a sports club, including Mang Tian, who wasn't sure which one to choose. One day, he happened to see a busy boxing ring. There was a practice match going on between Feng Yu and the head of the boxing club, her friend named Shomi. When Mang Tan saw the two girls fighting, it reminded him of his dad, who used to be a boxer. However, Mang Tan's memories of his dad were not pleasant, so he quickly left the scene. But Feng Yu noticed Mang Tan's presence and departure, and seemed to be deep in thought. Some time later, Mang Tan was going about his duties when he noticed a young boy being dragged by a group of tough guys. He wanted to help the boy, so he pretended to know him to distract the thugs and allow the boy to escape. Unfortunately, this led to Mang Tan getting beaten up by the thugs, and they also damaged the delivery he was supposed to make, and Mang Tan could do nothing but watch helplessly. Shortly after, Feng Yu and her friends happened to pass by and saw what was happening. They didn't know that Feng Yu and her friends were skilled in martial arts. They quickly confronted the thugs and fought back. After the incident, one of Feng Yu's friends named Ya Nan rushed to Mang Tian, holding his arm tightly and showing her affection for him. Feng Yu's expression seemed annoyed when she saw this. Nevertheless, Feng Yu suggested that Mang Tian should join the martial arts club. Mang Tian wasn't interested and just thanked them before leaving to finish his tasks. Later on, when Mang Tian reached his destination, he found that the delivery he was carrying was damaged due to the earlier incident. The customer was furious and scolded Mang Tian. Unexpectedly, Feng Yu appeared and scolded the customer, who turned out to be her younger brother, Feng Zhou. Thanks to Feng Yu, Mang Tan was once again saved from trouble. When Mang Tian returned home, his two younger siblings were upset because he had forgotten to buy their favorite food. He thought about how to fulfill their wishes with limited money. Meanwhile, Feng Yu was in her room, thinking about her day. She became frustrated when she remembered Ya Nun holding Mang Tian's hand. In the morning, Feng Yu went to visit the grave of someone she deeply respected, Uncle Ji Mian. He was the only person who cared about her when she was a child. After paying her respects at the grave and leaving, Mang Tan arrived to do the same for Uncle Ji Mian. Later on, Feng Yu and her friends faced punishment from the campus authorities to the fight that happened the previous day. Unlike Mang Tian, who didn't receive any punishment and got special treatment at his campus, he felt uneasy because his friends saved him from getting in trouble. Eventually, Mang Tan asked to be punished too, since the fight happened because of him. Hearing this, Lu Kai decided to punish the girls by having them train Mang Tan in martial arts because the campus didn't want to lose its only male student. When Yunnan heard about this punishment, she actually liked it and became more affectionate toward Mang Tan. And Feng Yu had to stay silent and watch them with an irritated expression. A few days later, Feng Yu came up with an unusual plan to teach Mang Tian martial arts. She announced a martial arts duel between them and posted it on bulletin boards all over the campus. Mang Tan had no idea about this, so he was quite surprised when all the girls encouraged him. When Mang Tan found out about the duel, he went to Feng Yu to object to the fight plan, saying he didn't have time for such things. At first, Feng Yu seemed nervous, thinking Mang Tan would appreciate her, but they ended up arguing and Mang Tan walked away. Shou Mi tried to comfort Feng Yu, realizing that Feng Yu had started to like Mang Tian. Shou Mi suggested they go to Mang Tian's workplace to apologize, but Mang Tian had already quit his job because of the earlier fight. Feng Yu remembered Mang Tian's damaged bicycle caused by the men from before, so she decided to buy the most expensive bike in the shop to give it to him. As Feng Yu left the bike shop, she admired the costly bike and rode it confidently. She talked to herself and smiled, thinking Mang Tian would like the bike she planned to give him. But suddenly, Feng Yu realized she was thinking about Mang Tian too much and quickly pushed those thoughts aside. 
Meanwhile, Mang Tan had left his old job and started working as a clown in a cafe. On the other hand, Feng Yu bumped into Shouni again. Despite her cold exterior, Feng Yu was actually a sweet and shy girl. So she asked Shomi for help in delivering the expensive bike to Mang Tian. Shomi refused and insisted Feng Yu should give it to him herself. When they arrived at Mang Tian's home, Feng Yu seemed disappointed to see Ya Nun already there. Mang Tan invited all three girls inside. Mang Lung, Mang Tian's younger brother, was thrilled that his idol Feng Yu had come to their house. The two younger siblings invited the girls to play cards, creating a lively and fun atmosphere. Feng Yu appeared very happy and laughed a lot. But then, a cockroach suddenly appeared, causing everyone to panic and run around. By accident, Mang Tan ended up carrying a frightened Feng Yu. When they realized what happened, Mang Tan quickly let go, almost causing Feng Yu to fall. In the end, Feng Yu invited Mang Tan to go outside and talk privately, where she presented the bike she bought earlier. However, Mang Tan declined the gift, saying it wasn't suitable for his deliveries. This made Feng Yu angry and she urged her friends to leave. Meanwhile, Mang Lung was excited after Feng Yu's visit and asked to join the Taekwondo club at his school, but Mang Tan got upset and refused. He remembered how his mom left them partly because his dad accidentally caused his opponent's death during a fight. Inside the house, Feng Yu began to recall her encounters with Mang Tan and started feeling irritated with herself for thinking about him too much. She quickly tried to erase those thoughts from her mind. The next day, Feng Yu and Mang Tan received a reprimand from the university for arranging a match without permission. They were both given the punishment of cleaning the swimming pool together. At first, they went through the punishment as expected, but as time passed, they became more comfortable with each other. They no longer felt awkward and even played with water together. Seeing this, the staff guarding them tied their legs together to prevent them from fooling around and to ensure they focused on completing the punishment. Not long after, the punishing task they were given led them to rest without realizing it, with their legs still tied together. During that moment, Feng Yu observed Mang Tian, who had unintentionally fallen asleep. She gathered the courage to get a closer look at him, but he suddenly woke up and realized she was watching. They both felt very awkward, and Feng Yu quickly left, leaving Mang Tian stunned. Feng Yu was confused about her feelings, but she coincidentally ran into two friends who were discussing signs of falling in love. She began to notice that what they described matched exactly what she was feeling for Mang Tian. She placed her hand on her chest and was reminded of the moments they spent together. No matter how hard she tried to resist, Mang Tian's image kept coming to her mind. Sometime later, Mang Tian and his younger brother bumped into a young man named Yi Chan. In the past, Yi Chan used to bully Mang Tian during school. This time, Yi Chan demanded that Mang Tian kneel down, and Mang Tian complied to avoid further trouble and left. However, Mang Tian's two younger siblings looked disappointed to see their elder brother powerless against Yi Chan. Even Mang Lung asked how Mang Tan could protect them if he couldn't defend himself. When they got home, Mang Tan thought about Mang Lung's words, which were similar to what Feng Yu had said. This strengthened Mang Tian's determination to train in martial arts to protect his loved ones. Mang Tian finally joined the boxing club and received direct training from Shomi. He even registered for a tournament to prove that he had become stronger than before. At one point, Yi Chan approached Mang Tian again, but Feng Yu suddenly appeared and defended Mang Tian. The issue was resolved and Mang Tian quickly left, while Feng Yu felt embarrassed about her actions, thinking she had made her affection for Mang Tian too obvious. While Feng Yu was feeling uneasy, Shomi approached her, surprising Feng Yu but trying to stay composed. Some time later, Feng Yu and Feng Zhou were invited to dinner by their grandfather at a fancy restaurant. Feng Xiu intended to introduce Feng Yu to the son of his business associate, hoping to arrange a marriage for her. Unexpectedly, Mang Tan was also there, working as a waiter. Feng Yu was a bit surprised to see him, but tried to remain composed. Shortly afterward, Feng Yu left the room because she felt uncomfortable with the young man introduced by her grandfather, Guan Yun, who had once embarrassed her in front of their friends. As Feng Yu remembered that unpleasant memory, Guan Yun approached her and tried to charm her. Unintentionally, Mang Tan overheard their conversation, and Feng Yu eventually walked away from Guan Yun. Mang Tan learned that Guan Yun had been a nuisance to Feng Yu since childhood. So Mang Tan deliberately spilled a drink on Guan Yun's clothes as a way to get back at him for his treatment of Feng Yu. This resulted in Mang Tan getting fired from his job. Feng Yu immediately went to Mang Tian who appeared nonchalant after being fired. 
However, Mang Tian lied and didn't want to admit that he did it for Feng Yu. Nevertheless, Feng Yu saw through the lie, leaving Mang Tian speechless. Feng Yu thanked Mang Tian and invited him to have dinner together. They had dinner at a place owned by one of their campus friends, Sun Hao, who was the second male student besides Mang Tian. At first, Feng Yu seemed unfamiliar with the counter's food, but she eventually enjoyed it wholeheartedly. During that moment, Mang Tian and Feng Yu grew closer, and they both blushed. Even after returning home, Fang Zhu noticed Feng Yu acting strangely and teased her occasionally. On the other hand, Mang Tian felt the same way when he remembered his closeness with Feng Yu. The next day, everyone was surprised to see Feng Yu, the campus queen at the campus canteen, as she had never been willing to eat there before, citing hygiene and cleanliness issues. This event left their friends puzzled and curious. Soon Hao then mentioned that Mang Tian and Feng Yu had dinner together at his place, which made Feng Yu and Mang Tian extremely embarrassed as they tried to hide it from their friends. Not long after, Mang Tian received a call from his brother Mang Lung's school. Unexpectedly, Mang Lung had gotten into trouble for fighting with his friend. None of Mang Lung's friends believed that he really knew the Queen of Fighters, Feng Yu, and this led to Mang Lung running away towards the campus gate. Fortunately, Mang Lung eventually met Feng Yu, and they returned to the school together. The issue was resolved as Mang Lung's friends began to believe him. They all made peace and forgave each other. Feng Yu also volunteered to help train them every month, a gesture warmly welcomed by the coach and all the students there. They expressed their gratitude to Mang Long. Some time later, Mang Tan gave advice to his two younger siblings, encouraging them to stay strong despite being a family of three without parents. Feng Yu was touched by this, and she continued to watch Mang Tan and his siblings with a heartwarming expression. As a gesture of thanks, Mang Tan invited Feng Yu for a walk with his two younger siblings. Before long, they came across a hot dog vendor holding a contest. Unfortunately, children couldn't participate, so Mang Tian and Feng Yu decided to enter the contest to make his siblings happy. During the contest, another moment of closeness unfolded between them. They looked very close and laughed together. Afterward, they helped each other wipe the flour off their faces, exchanging shy but warm glances. Their moment was interrupted by Mang Long, who also had a crush on Feng Yu. Some time later, Mang Tan started working at Sun Hao's cafe. Unexpectedly, he was approached by Yi Chan. Yi Chan ordered a lot of food but didn't eat any, claiming the presentation was poor and he had lost his appetite. He then told Mang Tan to pay for all the food, intending to humiliate him and make him fearful like before. However, Mang Tan had changed and he was defended by Sun Hao and Yao Nun, who disliked Yi Chan's arrogance. Shortly afterward, the captain of the boxing club Bao Zi arrived and scolded Yi Chan, which made Yi Chan leave the cafe in frustration. Bao Zi looked somewhat embarrassed by the situation and apologized to Mang Tian. After the incident with Mang Tian and Yi Chan, Shou Mi and Yao Nun accompanied Mang Tian back home. When they arrived at his house, they were surprised to find Feng Yu inside, playing with his younger siblings. They'd all gathered for a meal. During the meal, Ya Nun asked what was going on between Feng Yu and Mang Tian, but Shou Mi seemed to understand the situation and tried to change the subject. When they left, Shou Mi asked Feng Yu what had caused her to change so drastically. Shou Mi guessed that Feng Yu had fallen for Mang Tian, but Feng Yu felt embarrassed and tried to cover it up by saying that Mang Tian wasn't attractive to her. Unfortunately, Mang Tian accidentally overheard their conversation from a distance. He became self aware and no longer hoped to get close to Feng Yu. The next day, the campus library was buzzing with activity when Feng Yu suddenly entered, appearing to be looking for a book. This was highly unusual and puzzled the people there. She secretly picked up several romance-themed books. Just as Feng Yu was about to start reading them, Mang Tan approached her. Feng Yu was surprised and quickly hid the books. She appeared very nervous, even though Mang Tian only wanted to talk to her about the bike she had given him. Mang Tian said he didn't want to accept the bike without doing anything in return, so he asked if there was any way he could repay her. Feng Yu's nervousness gradually disappeared upon hearing Mang Tian's words. This event further agitated Feng Yu's mind, and she decided to confide in one of her professors named Chunhua, using a pseudonym. After learning about Feng Yu's issue, Chunhua said that the young man Feng Yu mentioned would probably leave her. Hearing this, Feng Yu became very anxious and sought advice once more. Chunhua eventually advised her to be more courageous and explain what was happening between them. During the journey back home, Feng Yu couldn't stop thinking about her problem. She recalled the moment when Mang Tian offered to help her, 
and she wished she could ask him out on a date. In her imagination, they walked together, enjoyed ice cream, and did fun things. However, her daydream was short-lived, and she blushed with embarrassment, returning to reality. Meanwhile, trouble struck Mang Tan's family again, when Mang Long complained of severe stomach pain. Fortunately, Ya Nun happened to be passing by and was on her way to Mang Tian's house, so she immediately took Mang Long to the hospital. The examination revealed that his illness was caused by intentionally contaminated food, which turned out to be a malicious act by Yi Chan. This angered Mang Tian, and he headed to Yi Chan's campus. Mang Tan tried to confront Yi Chan, but he was accused of causing trouble in the club. Luckily, Bao Zi intervened and promised to investigate Yi Chan's involvement in the incident with Mang Long. Fum Yu and her friends also arrived at the scene to pick up Mang Tian. The atmosphere grew tense, but Chun Hua was already there to keep everyone in check. Due to the incident, Mang Tian Fung Yu and their friends were summoned by the campus director, Xiu Zhang, and scolded. Mang Tian was at risk of losing his scholarship and being expelled from the campus. Fung Yu and her friends defended Mang Chan and were even willing to leave the campus with him. Hearing this, Mang Tian began to reconsider his attitude towards university. He had always tried to leave the campus before, but this time, he pleaded with Xiu Zhang for another chance. Feng Yu and her friend's actions touched Mang Tian, and he was determined to become stronger to protect his younger siblings. After everything was resolved, Mang Tian met with Feng Yu to express his gratitude. Feng Yu felt embarrassed and even stated that her actions were not because she had feelings for Mang Tian. However, Mang Tian was surprised and tried to ease the situation. Even though it was clear they both had mutual feelings, they were too shy to admit it. As Feng Yu got to know Mang Tian better, she underwent a transformation. Over time, she began to appreciate simple things, like sipping tea from an ordinary cup. Before meeting Mang Tian, Feng Yu had been accustomed to using luxury items and equipment, due to her wealthy family's status. She often found herself daydreaming with a smile, thinking about Mang Tian. On her way home, Feng Yu stopped at the cafe she often passed by. She wanted to meet the rabbit clown and buy him a cup of coffee. Feng Yu shared her problem, explaining how she couldn't act naturally in front of the man she liked. Listening silently to Feng Yu's words, the rabbit clown, who was actually Mang Tian, realized that she was describing him. However, Feng Yu had not yet realized that the large rabbit clown was indeed Mang Tian. The following day, Mang Tian continued his training with Ya Nun by his side. He practiced evasive techniques and, as usual, Ya Nun always found ways to playfully tease him, leading Xiu Mi to scold Ya Nun for taking advantage of Mang Tian. Later on, Mang Tian took on a part-time job as a car washer. While he was working, Sun Hao Xiu Mi and Ya Nun suddenly appeared to help him. At first, Mang Tian didn't agree, but he couldn't say no as they insisted on assisting him. When Feng Yu found out, she also came to the car wash and pretended to clean her car. In reality, Feng Yu wanted to be with her friends to help Mang Tian. They all worked together with joy and laughter. Feng Yu seemed to thoroughly enjoy these moments, laughing freely, while occasionally stealing glances at Mang Tian. At the same time, Mang Tian also glanced at Feng Yu several times, noticing her cheerful demeanor. After they finished working, Mang Tian thanked his friends for their help, even though he hadn't expected it, but he couldn't refuse their sincerity. The next day, Feng Yu asked Xiu Mi to accompany her to the Taekwondo Academy for training, but Xiu Mi declined. At the same time, Feng Yu suddenly had the idea to invite Mang Tan to train together. She said that she had promised to teach her knowledge to both of Mang Tian's siblings and their friends at the Taekwondo Academy. Feng Yu hoped that Mang Tian would be her assistant and accompany her, so they could spend more time together. Shortly after, Sun Hao approached them, which slightly annoyed Feng Yu as Sun Hao forced himself to be her assistant. Seeing the situation, Mang Tan took the initiative to intervene, explaining that it was his responsibility due to his siblings. Feng Yu smiled and was pleased with Mang Tian's attitude. Not long after, Feng Yu and Mang Tian arrived at the Taekwondo Academy to teach Mang Tian's siblings and their friends. The atmosphere was lively and enjoyable. After the class ended, Mang Tian and Feng Yu walked back to campus, engaging in light conversation about Taekwondo and Mang Tian's reasons for loving boxing. During their walk, they came across a crying child whose kite had gotten stuck. Without hesitation, Feng Yu retrieved the kite and returned it to the child. Witnessing Feng Yu's kindness, Mang Tan was impressed, and both of them blushed as they exchanged shy glances. Upon arriving at the campus, Feng Yu invited Mang Tan to spar in the boxing ring. Feng Yu threw many punches at Mang Tian, but he only defended himself and didn't retaliate. 
Thought Mu became frustrated and wondered what Mang Tan was afraid of. Mang Tan recalled the sad moment when his father accidentally defeated his opponent, leaving him unable to fight again for the rest of his life. Hearing this, Feng Yu asked Mang Tan to strengthen his resolve, so he wouldn't be haunted by the past anymore. After the training, Mang Tian returned home, and Yi Chan was already there, confronting him for another challenge. However, this time, Mang Tan had the courage to stand up to Yi Chan, and warned him to wait for the day they would duel in the boxing ring. Yi Chan hastily retreated, not expecting Mang Tan to challenge him this time. Yi Chan's appearance had a positive impact on Mang Tian, as he now felt more confident and self-assured. Before the tournament, both campuses held a joint party, and all the female students were allowed to attend. During the entrance process, the female students were required to pass through a metal detector. Unexpectedly, most of them were found carrying weapons, including Ya Nun. During this party, Mang Tian's arrival left all the girls captivated by his handsomeness. Mang Tian appeared in an elegant suit, making him the center of attention. Feng Yu was among those who couldn't stop looking at him. She even imagined Mang Tian approaching her and asking her to dance. At that moment, Yan Nun started moving toward Mang Tian. Fortunately, Xiao Mi noticed and blocked Yan Nun's actions while urging Feng Yu to approach Mang Tian. Unfortunately, Feng Yu was too shy and reserved to do so. Shortly afterward, Feng Yu saw Mang Tian leaving, and she followed into a park. Feng Yu approached Mang Tian with various excuses, just as she usually did. They both praised each other's appearance, and with shyness, Mang Tian asked Feng Yu to teach him how to dance, as he had never done it before. They began practicing dance in the park. This romantic moment made them both gaze at each other and smile shyly. Mang Tian remembered the early days of their encounter when Feng Yu had been so cold and scolded him in the park. Hearing this, Feng Yu only smiled awkwardly because she was incredibly happy. Not long after, Feng Yu invited Mang Tan to her home and introduced her sibling, Fang Zhuo, as her sparring partner. Fang Zhuo accidentally mentioned that Mang Tan had managed to captivate Feng Yu and change her attitude. This comment irritated Feng Yu, and she tried to change the subject before initiating a match between the two of them. Unexpectedly, Mang Tian won against Fang Zhuo, leaving Feng Yu impressed. Before leaving, Fang Zhuo hinted at Mang Tian's relationship with Feng Yu causing Feng Yu to become annoyed once again. Afterwards, they chatted casually on the terrace of Feng Yu's house, and it became apparent that Feng Yu's attitude towards Mang Tan was becoming more open. Feng Yu even shared stories from her past and her relationship with her grandfather. Mang Tan listened attentively and seriously, adding that Feng Yu had been one of the people who had inspired him up to this point. The conversation flowed smoothly for a while, but then they seemed to run out of topics to discuss and they fell into an awkward silence. This awkwardness continued when they got into the car, as Feng Yu drove Mang Tan to his workplace. When Mang Tan arrived at work, he was surprised to see Ya Nun there to help him. After work, the two of them returned to Mang Tan's home to have dinner together. Unexpectedly, Feng Yu also arrived with a lot of food to share at Mang Tian's home. However, when Feng Yu saw Ya Nun already there and appearing very close to Mang Tian, she changed her mind and immediately left Mang Tian's house. This incident left Feng Yu feeling upset, and she mumbled to herself while eating all the food alone. Seeing this, Fang Zhuo quickly guessed that Feng Yu was feeling jealous. Sometime later, Xiao Mi helped Feng Yu get closer to Mang Tian on campus. Xiao Mi seemed to be trying to keep Ya Nun away from them, but Ya Nun resisted by cooking food for Xiao Mi. Ya Nun was known as a skilled cook, so she managed to divert Xiao Mi's attention and get closer to Mang Tian. This made Feng Yu very angry when Ya Nun sent videos of herself with Mang Tian. Meanwhile, Xiao Mi could only apologize to Feng Yu because she had fallen for the delicious food prepared by Ya Nun. After some thought, Feng Yu decided to learn how to cook to compete with Ya Nun. However, Feng Yu only learned cooking from YouTube videos and hoped to become a skilled chef overnight. After finishing her cooking, Feng Yu asked Fang Zhuo to taste it. Fang Zhuo found it so unpleasant that he distributed the food to his employees, which resulted in them all suffering from stomachaches. On the other hand, Mang Tian, who was training, suddenly had to stop due to an injury. He was in severe pain and couldn't perform his job as a clown as usual. Seeing this, Yan Nun offered to replace him as the clown, and Mang Tian reluctantly accepted her offer. Unexpectedly on that day, Fun Yu came to the cafe and told a love story. When she finished her story, Ya Nun immediately removed her clown mask, shocking Feng Yu. Ya Nun revealed the truth about the situation, 
where the person who had been wearing the Khan costume was actually Mangtan. Fum Yu was utterly shocked by this revelation, unable to imagine how much of her innermost thoughts Mang Tian had discovered. Afterward, Fum Yu went to meet Xiao Mi and shared her recent experience. Xiao Mi had already suspected the relationship between Fum Yu and Mang Tian. Furthermore, Xiao Mi noticed the oil burn on Fum Yu's hand, which she had acquired from her cooking experiments a few days earlier. Xiao Mi finally got the answer and offered to help Fum Yu get closer to Mang Tian. However, Fung Yu was still very awkward and hesitant to show her feelings. Seeing this, Xiao Mi advised Fung Yu and compared her to Ya Nun, who always made an effort to win Mang Tian's heart. Some time later, Fung Yu was still trying to put her feelings into words when suddenly, Mang Tian appeared and greeted her. However, Mang Tian's arrival made Fung Yu feel extremely awkward and confused, causing her to forget all the words she had prepared. Just as Fung Yu was about to express her feelings to Mang Tian, a bell rang, disrupting the moment. The opportunity was lost, but Feng Yu didn't give up and immediately devised another plan. Unexpectedly, her backup plan involved cooking. Feng Yu rushed to Sun Hao's place and asked him to teach her how to cook. After that, Feng Yu practiced the cooking lessons given by Sun Hao. This time, Xiao Mi was the first victim of Feng Yu's cooking. However, Xiao Mi had prepared stomach medicine in advance. Initially, Xiao Mi felt anxious, but she still tried to please Feng Yu and tasted her cooking. Shomi's expression, initially filled with anxiety, turned into a joyful smile as she complimented Feng Yu's cooking. Shortly after, Feng Yu announced that she would meet Mang Tian because she could no longer keep her feelings hidden. Hearing this, Shomi became excited and encouraged Feng Yu. Meanwhile, Mang Tian and Sun Hao were sitting apart. While they were engrossed in conversation, Feng Yu suddenly appeared and talked to Sun Hao. They seemed very close, which irritated Mang Tian. He then vented his frustration during training by hitting a punching bag. Seeing this, Xiao Mi quickly approached Mang Tian and persuaded him to stop. Xiao Mi invited Mang Tian to go somewhere where Feng Yu and Sun Hao were sharing food. This made Mang Tian even more annoyed, but he was forced by Xiao Mi to go there. Shortly after, Ya Nun arrived with food she had prepared for Mang Tian. She even moved her face close to Mang Tian's, and this incident made Feng Yu very angry and frustrated. This time, it was Feng Yu who vented her emotions on a punching bag, striking it fiercely and recklessly. Seeing this, Xiao Mi could only advise her and try to calm Feng Yu's anger. Shortly after, Xiao Mi suggested the two of them have a conversation, and then talked about a legendary boxing move she intended to pass on. Unexpectedly, the move was the one that had taken Uncle Ji Mian's life. Hearing this, Feng Yu became very emotional. The next day, the martial arts tournament took place. In the first match, Mang Tian secured a victory, and his next opponent was Yi Chan. In the initial rounds, Mang Tian could only defend himself as Yi Chan attacked him brutally. Fortunately, Mang Tian managed to withstand the pressure and turn the tide in his favor. The match ended with Yi Chan fainting from Mang Tian's attacks. After the match, Mang Tian received appreciation and congratulations from Xiao Zhang. His victory was also celebrated by his friends who invited him to a restaurant. Mang Tian looked very happy and grateful to have friends, who supported him. After the celebration, Ya Nun suddenly approached Mang Chan and went home with him. This made Feng Yu once again feel angry and jealous. However, Feng Yu remained silent and unable to do anything. The next day, they crossed paths again on campus, and Ya Nun acted as if nothing had happened, behaving as usual. Some time later, Feng Yu hadn't gone to campus for a few days due to personal matters she needed to handle. During that time, Mang Tian felt a deep void and often daydreamed about spending time with Feng Yu. Similarly, Feng Yu missed Mang Tian terribly. One day, after receiving advice from Xiao Mi, Mang Tian decided to visit Feng Yu at her office. He mustered the courage to invite her to an amusement park. Feng Yu declined the invitation, citing her work commitments, but secretly, she was delighted and elated. After leaving her office, Feng Yu planned to visit Mang Tian's house and bring him some food. However, when she arrived, she unexpectedly found Xiao Mi and Ya Nun standing in front of Mang Tian's house, confronting Yi Chan and his associates. Yi Chan was still holding a grudge against Mang Chan and was seeking revenge. Mang Tian had not yet returned home from work. Upon seeing the situation, Feng Yu and her friends invited Yi Chan and his group to fight on campus. In the end, Feng Yu and her friends emerged victorious from the confrontation and vowed to keep the incident a secret from Mang Tian. Not long after, Mang Tian arrived and found the three of them at his house. He inquired about the reason for their visit, but no one answered as they were busy eating with Mang Tian's younger siblings. 
Fung Yu, however, felt a bit disappointed because she hadn't had a chance to share the food she brought. After the meal, Fung Yu stepped outside to be alone. Observing this, Mang Tian followed her. Fung Yu admitted that she was still contemplating Mang Tian's invitation to the amusement park. She also explained that she needed to remain focused on her work as long as her grandfather was around. The next day, Fung Yu was on her way to the office, still thinking about what Mang Tan had said the previous night. She truly wanted to go to the amusement park with him, but circumstances seemed to prevent it. Her daydreaming was interrupted when she realized her driver was taking her upon a different route to the company. The driver explained that Fang Zhuo had arranged her schedule so she could join her friends. Fang Zhuo had even prepared a cute outfit for Feng Yu to wear to the amusement park Mang Chan had mentioned. Her driver was taking her there. Meanwhile, Mang Chan and the others were getting ready to enter the amusement park. Before long, Feng Yu arrived, wearing an incredibly feminine and adorable outfit that captivated everyone, especially Mang Tian. They had a great time, enjoying various rides at the park. Xiu Mi skillfully thwarted Ya Nun's attempts to separate Feng Yu and Mang Tian. Feng Yu and Mang Tian even rode a thrilling attraction that Feng Yu had wanted to try for a long time. Later, they ventured into a haunted house with Xiu Mi. A romantic moment occurred when Mang Tian complimented Feng Yu's beauty and held her hand to comfort her in the spooky setting. The following day, Feng Yu arrived on campus with a radiant smile. She approached Mang Tian and Xiu Mi, who were practicing. Soon after, Ya Nan arrived and informed them that they had been summoned by Xiu Zhang. Unexpectedly, Mang Tian and the others were given a task to travel to Macau for a demonstration match aimed at recruiting new students. A few days later, Feng Yu faced another problem because her grandfather insisted on her meeting Guan Yun, the person she was arranged to marry. Guan Yun even came to the campus to pick up Feng Yu. By chance, Mang Tan was passing by and crossed paths with Guan Yun, who asked about Feng Yu's whereabouts. Soon after, Feng Yu and Xiu Mi approached them. Guan Yun invited Feng Yu to have a meal together, and Feng Yu tried to decline the invitation. However, Xiu Mi seemed to have something in mind and encouraged Feng Yu to accept Guan Yun's offer. Meanwhile, Mang Tian remained silent, observing them from a distance. Not long after, Feng Yu, Xiu Mi, and Guan Yun were at a restaurant. Unexpectedly, Xiu Mi had her own plan and invited all the students and campus leaders to join them for a meal. This made Guan Yun uncomfortable and angry. After the meal, Feng Yu still had Mang Tan on her mind, especially when they were about to part ways. Upon hearing this, Xiu Mi planned to provoke Mang Tan into admitting his feelings for Feng Yu. On the other hand, Mang Tan seemed troubled, thinking about the incident on campus the previous day. It seemed like he was jealous and disappointed with Feng Yu's willingness to accept Guan Yun, the person she was arranged to marry. The next day, both Mang Tian and Feng Yu acted coldly during their training. Xiu Mi arrived and deliberately brought up the lunch event with Guan Yun, sparking Mang Tian's anger though he tried to control it. After Xiu Mi left, Mang Tian took the opportunity to talk to Feng Yu and warn her to be cautious around Guan Yun. Feng Yu attempted to get Mang Tan to confess his feelings, but he still appeared awkward and lacked confidence. Xiu Mi, frustrated by their reluctance to admit their feelings, couldn't understand why they were hiding them. Mang Tan happened to pass by, so Xiu Mi shared a story about the complexities of a senior-junior relationship without mentioning names, making Feng Yu panic and accidentally knock Xiu Mi unconscious. Feng Yu carried Xiu Mi away and fled, leaving Mang Tan behind. Some time later, while Mang Tan was working, Guan Yun suddenly approached him with the intention of humiliating and insulting him due to his social status. In response, Mang Tian used a water hose to make Guan Yun retreat quickly. The next day, Su Nao approached Mang Tian and engaged in casual conversation. They discussed Feng Yu's arranged marriage with Guan Yun, expressing their unwillingness for her to be with him. Initially, Mang Tian thought Su Nao was closer to Feng Yu. But Sun Hao revealed that he had given up pursuing Feng Yu because he knew she had feelings for Mang Tian. This surprised and pleased Mang Tian, although he still felt unworthy of Feng Yu. Not long after, Mang Tian rode his bicycle with deep thoughts, planning to meet Feng Yu and discuss their feelings. As he passed the cafe where he worked as a clown, he spotted Feng Yu inside. Mang Tian parked his bike and approached her. They ordered drinks and sat together breaking the awkward silence when Mang Tian openly asked about Feng Yu's feelings. This surprised Feng Yu, who panicked and left the cafe. However, Mang Tian chased after her and held her hand. Finally, they both confessed their feelings and discussed the moments that had made them jealous of each other. The next day, Feng Yu and Mang Tian exchanged smiles while enjoying lunch in the cafeteria. 
The day of the assignment arrived, and Mang Chen and their three friends headed to the airport for their trip to Macau. However, Feng Yu couldn't join them because she had been assigned to go to Dubai by her grandfather. Meanwhile, Mang Chen and the others were in Macau, preparing for the competition. Feng Yu, on the other hand, sat and watched her friends match since her flight was delayed due to airline issues. After the competition, Mang Tan took the opportunity to meet with his former boss. They had a warm conversation over a meal, during which Mang Tian shared about his new girlfriend, bringing joy to his boss. Following the meeting, Mang Tan went to be alone by a fountain, lost in thought about Feng Yu's current situation. Unexpectedly, Feng Yu appeared from behind, and they warmly greeted each other, sitting by the fountain. They agreed to create beautiful moments together, despite their past bitter memories in this city. Not long after, Mang Tin and Feng Yu took a leisurely walk through a night market, dressed in matching outfits. They stumbled upon a rabbit doll that brought back memories of when Feng Yu met Mang Tin dressed as a clown rabbit. Although she hadn't recognized him then, both of them felt shy and affectionate. A little later, Feng Yu had to say goodbye to Mang Tin because she was just passing through Macau on her way to Dubai. As they parted, Mang Tan surprised her by giving her the rabbit doll he had secretly purchased, which made Feng Yu very happy. The following day, Mang Tin and his friends were getting ready to return to campus. Soon Hao finally found out about Mang Tin and Feng Yu dating when he saw an incoming call on Mang Tin's phone. They both agreed not to discuss it in front of their friends. Despite being in a relationship, Mang Tin and Feng Yu still felt shy, evident when Feng Yu called Mang Tin one night, and they awkwardly conversed struggling to express their longing for each other. A few days later, Feng Yu returned home and invited Mang Tan to meet her at the campus park. She also surprised him with a rabbit doll as a gift in response to the one Mang Tan had given her earlier. Unbeknownst to them, Yan Nun witnessed this romantic moment from a distance, filled with jealousy, and quickly left them alone. Meanwhile, Fang Zhu learned about Feng Yu being in love and took the initiative to look after Mang Tian's younger siblings at their house. This allowed Mang Tin and Feng Yu to go on dates together without worrying about childcare. Feng Yu and Mang Tin then decided to spend a lovely day at the beach, enjoying the seaside view. They gleefully rode bicycles along the shore, noticing the numerous other young couples in the area. After a pleasant ride, Mang Tin and Feng Yu held hands and admired the sea, feeling the romance in the air. Their conversation flowed more easily than before, and even the usually innocent Mang Tian began to give compliments and sweet words to Feng Yu. It was a truly special day for both of them. Some time later, Feng Yu and Fang Zhu were summoned by their grandfather. At that meeting, Feng Xiu instructed Feng Yu to distance herself from Mang Tian due to his lower social status. Feng Xiu had learned about Mang Tian from Guanyan, who was arranged to marry Feng Yu. Despite her grandfather's demands, Feng Yu refused to end her relationship with Mang Tian. The argument escalated to the point where Feng Yu left her home and sought refuge at Shomi's house. Fortunately, Shou Mi and her dad were caring and welcomed Feng Yu to stay with them temporarily. A little later, Feng Yu finished shopping and decided to visit Mang Tian's house, where she prepared noodles for him and his two siblings. A romantic moment unfolded as Mang Tian fed Feng Yu the noodles, and they both appeared very happy. The following day, Feng Yu was summoned to the campus by Shou Zhang. Feng Yu was forced to resign from the university at her grandfather's request, and Shou Zhang couldn't do anything about it as it was a family matter beyond his control. However, Feng Yu wasn't too concerned about these developments. She sat in the campus park and searched for articles on typical couple activities. Later, she invited Mang Tan to have a meal together, trying to apply the tips she had found. During their date, several other female students spotted them, and rumors began to spread throughout the campus. Not long after, Feng Xiu was seen visiting the car wash where Mang Tian worked. He requested that Mang Tian stay away from Feng Yu and implied that he would fulfill any request from him. However, Mang Tian politely declined and stated that he would always be with Feng Yu unless she asked him to leave. Without uttering a word, Feng Xiu promptly left the place. Meanwhile, Feng Yu and Shou Mi were taking a leisurely walk for some fresh air when they unexpectedly ran into Sun Hao and Yan Nun. However, Ya Nun still harbored jealousy towards Feng Yu, who was now dating Mang Tian. They decided to go to a sports facility and encountered Guan Yun, who was also planning to use the field. They ended up having a competition, which Feng Yu and her friends won. On the other hand, Fang Zhu tried to locate Feng Yu, who hadn't returned home for days and had turned off her phone. He went to the campus and asked Ya Nun to help him bring her to the training place. After meeting with Feng Yu, 
Fang Zhuo informed her that their grandfather was ill and requested her to return home with them. Hearing this news, Feng Yu softened and agreed to go back. In the following days, Feng Yu could still meet Mang Tian as usual, and nothing significant occurred. On one occasion, Feng Yu also visited Mang Tian's house, where they enjoyed noodles together with her two siblings. During their meal, a power outage occurred due to heavy rain, which wasn't the first time it had happened at Mang Tian's house. Meanwhile, Feng Xiu and Fang Zhu were having dinner at their home. They discussed Feng Yu, who hadn't returned home, and Fang Zhu speculated that Feng Yu might be at Mang Tian's house. Upon hearing this, Feng Xiu seemed to be plotting something regarding Feng Yu's relationship. The next day, Mang Tian planned to go to work at the cafe. However, he discovered that the cafe had been purchased by someone else and was no longer operational as it used to be. Mang Tian faced a similar situation when he went to the car wash, where his boss informed him that his business had been reported for not meeting national standards. Mang Tian stood there in disbelief at the difficult circumstances he was now facing. However, Mang Tian's problems didn't stop there. During the evening, the homeowner approached Mang Tian and informed him that they needed to vacate the house as it had been sold to another buyer at a high price. Despite Mang Tian's efforts to negotiate, the homeowner insisted that they had just two days to pack up and leave. With a resigned expression, Mang Tian tried to stay strong for the sake of his two younger siblings. The following day, Mang Tian and his siblings were spotted packing their belongings and reluctantly departing from the house they had called home. Luckily, Mang Tian had Sun Hao and his mother, who kindly agreed to temporarily accommodate Mang Tian and his siblings. Mang Tian expressed his gratitude to Sun Hao and his mom and offered to help with the food stall they managed. Shortly after, Mang Tian received a phone call from Fang Zhu, who requested him to visit his former rented house. Fang Zhu revealed that all the recent misfortunes Mang Tian had faced were orchestrated by his grandfather. They both agreed not to disclose this information to Feng Yu until Fang Zhu could resolve the issue. A few days later, Feng Xu's subordinates paid a visit to Sun Hao's house and made an offer to purchase both the food stall and the property. Recognizing the danger that Mang Tian was in, Sun Hao openly refused the offer, which nearly led to a violent confrontation with Feng Xu's subordinates. Meanwhile, Feng Yu had planned to visit Mang Tian and his two siblings, but she was taken aback when the homeowner informed her that Mang Tian and his siblings had already moved out. Shortly after this surprise, Ya Nun contacted Feng Yu and invited her to meet. Ya Nun was already aware of Mang Tian's dire situation, which involved Feng Yu's grandfather. She was overcome with emotion and wanted to confront the situation head on, unable to bear the thought of Mang Tian's suffering because of his relationship with Feng Yu. However, Feng Yu remained unaware of these developments as no one had informed her about what was happening. The confrontation between Feng Yu and Ya Nun grew heated until Shou Mi intervened to calm them down. After the argument, Feng Yu finally learned about the situation from Ya Nun. She was furious and immediately went home to confront her grandfather. They had a heated argument, during which Feng Xiu revealed that Uncle Ji Mian, whom Feng Yu cherished, had died as a result of a fight involving Mang Tian's father. Feng Yu was in shock and disbelief, her emotions in turmoil. She had never expected that her lover's father was responsible for her uncle's death. In the end, Feng Yu decided to meet with Mang Tian and directly ask him about the truth. Mang Tian could no longer avoid the conversation and expressed regret for his father's actions. He didn't want to revisit the painful memories that haunted him. Feng Yu, upon hearing his confession, was overwhelmed with sadness and confusion. She returned home deeply distressed. Seeing her in this state, Fang Zhu gathered the courage to confront his grandfather. Fang Zhu expressed that he had always believed Feng Yu was happiest and was cheerful when she was with Mang Tian. He was angry at Feng Xiu for taking away Feng Yu's happiness. Fang Zhu also requested that Feng Xiu stop interfering in Mang Tian's life and the lives of his two siblings. In the following days, Feng Yu gradually began to distance herself emotionally from Mang Tian. She even suggested that they should part ways. On the other hand, Mang Tian tried to be strong and accept this difficult reality. Despite his deep feelings for Feng Yu, he realized that he would never gain Feng Xiu's approval. The next day, Mang Tian visited Shou Mi's house to explain the recent events and asked for her assistance in checking on Feng Yu and understanding her current condition. Mang Tian also shared the painful history of his father's actions, which had inadvertently led to the death of Feng Yu's uncle. Upon hearing Mang Tian's story, Shou Mi's dad immediately hugged him, revealing that Mang Tian was the child of a fellow martial arts disciple. 
He offered to teach Mang Tan a secret martial art technique called the Death Strike, which had been the cause of Uncle Ji Mian's death. Mang Tian, however, politely declined, expressing his desire not to have anyone else suffer because of that technique. Impressed by Mang Tian's kindness, Shou Mi went to inform Feng Yu about it. Unfortunately, Feng Yu was already upset and tried to conceal her emotions from Mang Tian. She was deeply conflicted and needed time to think about their relationship. Despite Shou Mi's efforts to bring them closer again, it seemed that the gap between them had grown. Some time later, Mang Tian met with Fang Zhu, who had called him. Fang Zhu had purchased the house that Mang Tian and his two siblings used to live in and asked them to move back in. Mang Tian agreed to the request as long as it was on a rental basis and not offered for free. He also sought Fang Zhu's help in reaching out to Feng Yu. During that moment, Feng Yu was practicing her martial arts, vigorously striking a sandbag with visible anger and turmoil in her emotions. However, Mang Tan decided to approach her, attempting to open up about the dark past that followed the fight between his father and Uncle Ji Mian. He explained that the consequences of that fight had not only affected Feng Yu but also him and his two siblings. Mang Tian acknowledged how Feng Yu's presence had positively impacted his life, giving him back his lost courage and self-confidence. Hearing Mang Tian's heartfelt words, Feng Yu began to sympathize and soften her heart. Touched by his sincerity, she started reconsidering her stance towards their relationship. Meanwhile, Fang Zhu confronted Feng Shu and revealed that he had helped Mang Tian return to his old home. Feng Shu questioned Fang Zhu's loyalty, but Fang Zhu calmly requested him to allow Feng Yu to decide her own future. Not long after, Mang Tian moved back into his old home with the support of his friends, including Feng Yu. Despite their initial awkwardness and past issues, their relationship gradually improved in the following days. Moreover, Mang Tan had resumed his training with Feng Yu to prepare for an upcoming tournament. When the day of the tournament arrived, they, along with others, gathered at the arena. While Shoni was competing, a woman approached Feng Yu and showed her a photo of Uncle Ji Mian when he was younger. Claiming to be Uncle Ji Mian's former wife, the woman shared some information about his death, which left Feng Yu feeling uneasy. After a brief conversation, they went their separate ways. On the other hand, Feng Xiu received a call from the woman who had approached Feng Yu earlier. It turned out that she was one of Feng Xiu's subordinates, instructed to deceive Feng Yu. Feng Xiu intentionally provided false information about Mang Tian's father, suggesting that he had engaged in wrongdoing before his fight with Uncle Ji Mian. Recognizing Feng Yu's fragile mental state, Feng Xiu knew she would easily believe this lie. The following day, when Mang Tan invited Feng Yu to their training session, she had a somber expression and suppressed her emotions. Feng Yu once again broached the subject of Uncle Ji Mian and had been influenced by the false information from his former wife. She unilaterally decided to end her relationship with Mang Tan. Sometime later, Fang Zhu reached out to Shou Mi and inquired about Feng Yu's whereabouts. Concerned, Shou Mi hurried to find Mang Tan and asked about Feng Yu. Mang Tian explained how Feng Yu's attitude had shifted during the ongoing tournament, and they were still puzzled about the cause of her change. Unbeknownst to them, Feng Yu was actually at Uncle Ji Mian's grave, lost in thought about the words of Uncle Ji Mian's former wife. Fang Zhu arrived at the location shortly after, but Feng Yu had already left. Later that evening, heavy rain fell and Shou Mi found Feng Yu standing outside her house. She immediately invited Feng Yu in and helped her dry off. During this encounter, Shou Mi scolded and advised Feng Yu about her recent change in behavior, particularly regarding her relationship with Mang Tian. Feng Yu, who had once been steadfast, finally broke down in front of Shou Mi. She cried bitterly, unable to bear the weight of her thoughts and emotions. The following day, Feng Yu appeared composed. During breakfast, she surprised her grandfather by requesting permission to study abroad. Fang Zhu was shocked and opposed the idea. Just a few months ago, Fang Zhu had seen Feng Yu so happy with Mang Tian, but now that happiness seemed to have completely vanished. Feng Yu appeared to have given up on all her dreams. The next day, Feng Yu went to the campus to submit her resignation letter and bid farewell to her friends. Her face showed no sign of life or passion. Mang Tian hurried over to her, seeking the real reasons behind her decision. However, Feng Yu continued to hide her true feelings from him, using Uncle Ji Mian's situation as an excuse now mixed with false information from her grandfather's subordinate. Mang Tian, upon hearing this, offered to resign himself so that Feng Yu could continue her studies at the campus. But Feng Yu refused, insisting that Mang Tian stay for the sake of his two siblings. 
Not long after, Guanyin arrived to pick up Feng Yu. Initially, Feng Yu wanted to decline Guanyin's offer, but when she saw Mang Tian approaching, she deliberately got into Guanyin's car to make Mang Tian see her and perhaps resent her. She believed this would help her move on from her ex-lover. As time passed, Mang Tian could only reminisce about the beautiful moments he had shared with Feng Yu. These memories couldn't be easily erased, even as Feng Yu worked elsewhere. Some time later, Guan Yun encountered Mang Tian at the car wash and tried to intimidate and belittle him. Mang Tian's boss, who witnessed the incident, reported it to Fang Zhu. It turned out that Fang Zhu had purchased the car wash. Upon learning this, Fang Zhu promptly informed Feng Yu and their grandfather about Guan Yun's actions. With CCTV footage and evidence of the conversation, Guan Yun's true nature became evident. Feng Yu then deliberately invited Guan Yun for lunch, only to expose his malicious intentions in front of the media. Meanwhile, Feng Xiu had also seen the evidence that exposed Guan Yun's true intentions, which were solely focused on Feng Yu's wealth. Without hesitation, Feng Xiu called Guan Yun's father and canceled the arranged marriage. News of Guan Yun's wrongdoings quickly spread through the media. Meanwhile, Fang Zhu was elated because Feng Xiu had uncovered Guan Yun's true nature, just as he had intended to arrange Guan Yun's marriage to Feng Yu. Some time later, Feng Yu said her goodbyes to Mang Tian's two siblings and her school friends. The siblings seemed disappointed and left the room abruptly. Nevertheless, Feng Yu waited for them at her house and invited them for a meal as an apology for having to leave and no longer be able to accompany them. As much as Feng Yu tried to forget Mang Tian, the sweet memories they had shared continued to haunt her. Before long, Mang Tian called and invited her to the cafe where he worked. During their meeting, Mang Tian fondly recounted all the habits of Feng Yu that he used to see almost every day. Unbeknownst to herself, tears welled up in Feng Yu's eyes due to Mang Tian's kindness. No matter how hard Feng Yu tried to make Mang Tian hate her, he always tried to understand and empathize with her. After they parted ways and returned to their respective homes, Mang Tian was suddenly attacked by someone. The attacker turned out to be Wu Ji, Feng Yu's former rival. Wu Ji had targeted Mang Tian to provoke Feng Yu into a fight. Mang Tian was eventually kidnapped and held captive in a certain location. News of this incident reached Feng Yu, and she immediately contacted her friends to search for Mang Tian. In the end, Feng Yu learned that Yi Chan had previously conspired with Guan Yun and Wu Ji. With information from Yi Chan, they quickly located Wu Ji's hideout. However, upon their arrival, they were confronted by Wu Ji and his gang. Wu Ji promised to release Mang Tian if Feng Yu could defeat him. The battle began, not in a ring, but in a high and dangerous arena. The fight was intense, but it became evident that Feng Yu was no match for Wu Ji, and she was easily defeated. Not long after, Shumi's dad appeared at the scene and confronted Wu Ji. Shomi's dad explained that the person Wu Ji had been searching for didn't exist because the person Wu Ji was looking for was a fighter with a deadly technique called the Death Strike. Shomi's dad then asked Mang Tan to learn this technique, as it only required a short time to master. Initially, Mang Tan refused because he was also considering Feng Yu's trauma related to the technique. However, Feng Yu and Mang Tan were eventually convinced by Shomi's dad, given the urgent situation they were facing. With heavy heart, Mang Tian agreed to learn the technique, and Shomi's dad successfully taught her the deadly technique in just a few minutes. Not long after, Mang Tian decided to face Wu Ji in a fight. At the beginning, it seemed like Wu Ji was winning with his attacks. However, Mang Tian turned things around and defeated Wu Ji. Sadly, Mang Tian couldn't handle Wu Ji's final attack, and it ended up like what happened to Uncle Ji Mian. Wu Ji saw Mang Tian vulnerable and pushed him from height, making him unconscious. Luckily, the police arrived and arrested Wu Ji and his gang. Mang Tan was taken to the hospital. His critical condition was known to everyone, including the university president, Sho Zhang. This worried Feng Yu a lot. She stayed by Mang Tan's side, taking care of him while he was unconscious. Feng Xu understood the situation and postponed Feng Yu's overseas trip. Feng Yu helped Mang Tan with his responsibilities, like working as a bunny clown and washing cars. Feng Yu felt the weight of Mang Tian's duties. Feng Yu shared the situation with Fang Zhu and Feng Xu. Feng Xu was willing to help with Mang Tian's care and support his siblings' education, as he had changed his attitude after the arranged marriage was cancelled. However, Feng Yu still had to leave for her overseas studies. She sadly said goodbye to the still unconscious Mang Tian. The next day, Mang Tian started to wake up, 
and they hugged each other lovingly. They visited Uncle Ji Mian's grave together. Feng Yu asked Fang Zhuo to take care of Mang Tian's siblings. Afterward, Feng Yu met her friends in Mang Tian for their goodbyes. They took one last walk together, shared warm hugs, and remembered their sweet moments. After Feng Yu left, Mang Tian grew closer to everyone else. A year later, Feng Yu returned from her long absence, but she could only stay for a week before going back overseas. She remembered Mang Tian when she saw the rabbit doll still in her room. Suddenly, Fang Zhuo entered the room and asked if Feng Yu still had feelings for Mang Tian. Feng Yu tried to hide her emotions and said she would try not to think about Mang Tian anymore. But Fang Zhuo seemed to understand how Feng Yu truly felt. A few days later, Fang Zhuo approached Mang Tian and found evidence that cleared his father's name. He also discovered his grandfather's involvement with Uncle Ji Mian's former wife. Fang Zhuo wanted to expose the truth to Feng Yu. Surprisingly, Feng Yu was meeting with her grandfather to uncover the whole truth. In the end, Feng Xu admitted that he had indeed tried to separate Feng Yu from Mang Tian, even using dirty tactics to damage Mang Tian's father's reputation. This hurt Feng Yu deeply, and she felt saddened by her grandfather's actions. Fang Zhu, who had witnessed their conversation, became very angry with his grandfather. Shortly after, Fang Zhu went to see Mang Tian and gave him a chance to rekindle Feng Yu's feelings. Feng Yu traveled to Maca to find solace for her troubled heart. She visited her teacher and walked around places she used to go. Suddenly, Feng Yu's phone rang, and she got a message from Mang Tian. In the message, Mang Tian shared sweet words and expressed a desire to meet at a special spot. After reading the message, Feng Yu decided to go where Mang Tian wanted. Surprisingly, the special place turned out to be the city's fountain, where they had once made their love promises. After all the ups and downs, Mang Tian and Feng Yu officially became a couple again. And that's how the series came to an end. Moral lesson from the story, never tell about your lover to someone in a rabbit costume. You might just end up dating a fluffy martial arts bunny.